There's a great productivity feature inside Adobe Bridge that's going to save you a lot of time. It helps you create outputs like contact sheets very easily. Sometimes we get tasked for doing a six up page output and you end up jumping into another application like maybe InDesign doing the layout and all the captions and header and watermarks and it takes you a lot of time. We can do this with a couple of clicks in Adobe Bridge. Let's go have a look. All right. Here we are looking at a content folder inside Adobe Bridge CS5. We have a selection of images here, and I've created a uh, brand O logo that I'm going to use as a watermark. You can place this anywhere. I just stuck this in the same folder. I also created this as a portable network graphics file, a ping file, which means anything that's white is going to be transparent. You'll see the results in a moment. So here are the images. I am tasked to create an output, let's say three up or four up, and I need to have the captions underneath, the names, a watermark, all of this stuff. Well, up in the top, we have an output module. This output module may be obscured if you have this top element all the way over to the right. You simply pull that out and you can see the output module. And when I click on this, it launches our output module. There's two ways to output in the top right hand corner, either as a PDF or as a web gallery. We're not really going to go into the web gallery. We really want to focus here on a PDF output. So we have a number of templates in here, and you can download new templates. And there's other people that are creating these templates. I've created a few inside here. Here's some of the defaults. This is a two by two cell, four by five contact sheet. Let's try this one five by eight. And when I refresh the preview, it's going to build a new output over there on that side. Hey, this is the contact sheet output we've been missing in Photoshop for a long time. If you've been using that feature for years in Photoshop, look to Adobe Bridge for that same functionality. All right, down to the bottom are the images that I'm using inside here. So if I select fewer images and then refresh that preview, you're going to see fewer images on the page. This is all being built dynamic. I don't have to wait and output and import and build all this stuff in another application. So let's look at some of our features down here. First of all, we get to set a paper size. So let's go to US uh, paper. We've got letter size, legal tabloid. You can also put in the numbers in here. We can measure by inches, pixels, centimeters. We can flip it horizontal or vertical. You can set the quality of the output too. And if you want super high quality with all the super high quality images, then you can leave it at full. We can turn the quality all the way up to 70 if we want as a slider. We can change the background color. We can even put an open and a permissions password on here. Remember, we're making an Adobe PDF document with this output, so we get all the same security features that we would normally have by making a PDF. I'm going to leave the password off for now. We can change the layout of how many rows across, up or down. We can also turn on Use Auto Spacing. And when I click Refresh Preview, you'll see that based on my settings, it's going to change the spacing however I want. Um, I can also place the images across or down first. I can rotate for best fit. This is actually better when you're outputting something for what we would like to call picture package. So if you're outputting this to, let's say, an inkjet printer and you're cutting them up, you want to make sure you're maximizing this space. And this will make sure that if you've got some room over here, it'll flip images this way. We don't really need that for this particular uh, output. So let's turn layout off, go to overlays. Right now we have the file name. We could also have the page number on the header, on the footer. You can see by all these choices in here, we can make a very rich document. So I can add a header and I can call this new images to approve. And when I click refresh preview, you'll see now we have a header and let's stick that instead of the right. Let's stick it in the center and refresh that preview. And if I click inside here, I can zoom in and see that. Hold the Option key or Alt on Windows, and we zoom out. Same with a footer. Playback. This is interesting. This is a, a completely different mode uh, for a PDF. You might not know, but Acrobat, for the longest time now, can export a PDF so that it looks and acts like a PowerPoint presentation. It jumps to full screen and allows you to go next page, next page. Again, we don't need that for this. We're creating a document. So let's turn that 
off, and we can get down here to watermarks. When I click add, or add watermark, I can insert text or I can insert an image. So if I choose insert text, I can call this draft, and I can change the size, make this huge, and I can tell it whether I want one of these on every image or just over top of the whole thing. So let's refresh that preview, and we can see draft, draft, draft is coming up on every single one. Oops, I don't want it on every image. Let me turn that off and refresh this. So you've seen how many times I've refreshed this preview. This is great. Instead of building things accidentally and deleting them and coming back, I'm just gonna wait until I get it right. There's also a really good chance that if you're doing this kind of output, you're probably gonna do the same kind of output somewhere down the road. So why don't we save this template? So in my templates, you can see I've got a few, but right beside that, that little page icon, when I click here, I can save it as my new template. Create, and there it is. Let me show you one that I created for our fictitious company called Brand O. I'll refresh the preview. This uses a watermark that is the image. Remember I showed you that ping file, and you can see the watermark now placed on every single image, and you can set the transparency uh, of that. You can set the uh, horizontal and vertical offset. I could even rotate that wherever I wanted to. So if you've got workflows where you need certain stamps of version one, version two, you can place this right directly within the document. So let's make sure that you start using the full features of Adobe Bridge CS5 in all your applications. Remember, this is images, but these could be the thumbnails of movie files. This could be the front covers of InDesign files. You can use it for any number of jobs that you need to get a quick output, okay?